The views and opinions expressed on From the Mouths of Madness are that of the panel and not of the Geeks Under the Influence Network or their sponsors. Amazon.com and TeePublic.com. Listeners, beware. Coming straight from the Mouths of Madness, I am one of the hosts, Lowdown. With me, as always, is... F. You Honor. What's up, you witch trial motherfuckers? I don't know. Like uh, t- 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 Satan worshipping... Blood squirting killer killers. Soul sacrificing... Killer kill bee. That's what I... Yeah. Killer kill bee. Yeah. <laughs> killers killing each other. Yeah. Yep. Killers be killing yep. killers. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> None of that made any sense. We're sorry, but... Uh, all right. Yeah. So, if you see the movie, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And the movie we're talking about uh, would be on the chopping block tonight would be part three... Of the Fear Street trilogy. It says sixteen sixty six, but it's like sixteen sixty six forward slash nineteen ninety four. Yeah. And then the other part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And then like the other <laughs> almost half of the film. And then most of nineteen ninety four. So this is literally like half and half. Yeah. Roughly. I think it might be a little more towards ninety four, actually. I actually uh, watched something about how because they incorporated all the actors from the first two movies in this, mm-hmm. and some some yeah. they used filmed like not, the people in 94 this was they had them film it afterwards some of the people in 78 they filmed the scenes before they filmed 78 that's weird isn't that yeah that's a weird so order weird. but and also the production's a little higher on this one cuz you got to you know all the old time clothes yeah. set pieces and stuff like that so like all right we got this bitch for a week so uh just just show up early and we'll do yeah. this and then you film your other movie See, right with, 19, with 1978 it was like oh that half this fa- half this is back in fashion now so yeah. right, we can just kind of go to target and buy shit like, yeah, in reality, I'll tell you the one thing very much lacking in 1666 is a uh, um, shampoo or anything because that one dude. Hygiene. Well, that Hygiene. one dude. Yeah, but not everybody. That but played, that one uh, dude. Yeah, he's the sack killer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he man, that's some greasy fucking. Like, not everybody in that town has greasy hair, but that motherfucker. It's like he took grease and like greased it up every scene. You no, know, I don't remember if they ever mentioned his last name, but I bet it might be Rock because he's like the. Medieval version of Kid Rock without greasy he looks. Yeah, yeah. Like he's the medieval he's Kid Rock. Creepy, yeah. We're just gonna call him Kid Rock from now on. Yeah, there we go. But he's, he does have that look that yeah. you're just like. Besides the greasy hair, you're like, nah, yeah, there's something fucked up with this guy, right? Well, yeah. I mean, dude, I thought he was the town drunk. Yeah. But then he like, you never see him drinking anything. And he's just, he's just the town whatever slob. Yeah, I don't know what the you greasy mean, like, like, like. He's hygiene. just a town guy that's like mm, that dude smells. We we don't know if he's drinking, but we don't want to fucking hang out with. Worst him. thing whenever it comes to stuff like this, especially in tire periods or or any instance where hygiene is horrible, whether it be an apocalypse or whatever. Like when he's like in her face talking and you see his teeth are like just brown, yeah, and like dark brown Ugh. and like black. I'm like, oh, I would fucking punch you in the face so hard for the stench. Yeah, you are imposing on me. Yeah. Fucking was he the terrible. one that rolls up later with the boner at the um, no, drug party? No, that was one of the, uh, uh, it's one of the, remember, because he testified that, uh, yeah, she's oh, a witch at right. the yeah, trial. Yeah, yeah, Because he's, he's, he was upset because he got high and got a boner and got rejected. Oh, okay, that's, that's right, you know, yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. You get rejected as you accuse mm-hmm. them of being a witch. Oh, uh, you didn't fuck me, so witch, witch, witch. Exactly. Yeah. Witch. That witch went to touch my penis, witch, witch. <laughs> Obviously, if she's not going to touch my penis, she has to have control the dark arts i mean that's that's the only other option right guys all women want my penis yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's just, uh, i mean no so you know that that's really the main thing that we kind of get from 1666 they do a great job of just setting up the time period that protestant fucking flog yourself hate yourself you know if, if everything's not completely by everyone else's standard which they think is by the god then you are evil uh, you welcomed in the devil or you've done something yeah there's this ignorance of yeah. and fear it's gotta be possessed by the devil because yeah. you would have done this like people don't she be has fucked laid up shit. with the devil and taken up his dark arts or whatever she got fuck. figured by the devil and, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just sit and spin like <laughs> well, that would have been all kind of crazy also it's like she got figured by the devil yeah like, wow all you they guys... were missing was a fucking goat yeah, they didn't have a, they didn't have any black Philip. We did get a pig. Oh, we did get a pig. Which at first you're like, cool, they're birthing, and they had to like slice the pig open. Like this one is probably one like outside of just gratuitous kills. This one's probably the most graphically like like environmentally violent. Yeah, it, it gets know? yeah like, it gets, gets kind of pretty, pretty fucking creepy. Yeah, and yeah. that's like the fucking the apples or whatever the shit that had the yeah because. You know, uh, and what emphasizes the, you know, the mindset of this current time period is that all of a sudden no crops will grow. 
Uh, all the fruit is rotten pretty much right off the vine. Shit all just, in it. Yeah, and then the pig ends up eating its own piglets, which was, which was fucking gross, dude, because they showed it. it was yeah, like, oh. and it's like chowing down and just the whole oh, pen, feet, the whole pen is just covered in um, yeah. baby blood. So, yeah. and yeah. Then apparently Pig, or, I'm it. sorry, piglet blood. Piglet blood. Yeah. yeah. And then they tried to, then they killed it, but apparently it's meat it's spoiled already. Like, it was just, everything was fucking Yeah, you fucking can't even rotten, get a dude. positive, like, all right, well, we had to kill it, and like, what? And you can't even fucking eat it. You're like, oh, well. And that sucks. Now, normally, uh, you know, as soon as they come out with, oh, there's some God, why has God forsaken us? There's been an evil cursed upon this land. Like, normally I'm like, uh, no, nah, dude, it was a bad season. I yeah. don't know what to tell you. Yeah, some but, shit happened. But, I mean, this is a horror movie. So the whole time now the town's amped up with the paranoia and the fear. Because really, that's what it comes down to, right? There, there, That time period is just this British Protestant Fear mongering. Yeah, if shit doesn't go right. Yeah, it's, it's, the, devil. It, it's the devil. It's some, the devil. Some dark arts. Some shit fucked. Yeah, it can't be just shit bad happens. season. Yeah, shit happens. You know. So now I didn't win the lottery because of the Satan. Like, nah, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I play lottery, I don't win. Fucking Satan. Fucking Satan. I would have won. Devil. I would have won. Fucking Went for Satan. The fucking devil. Yeah. Shit. But uh, now that heightened everything that they were already. That's already part of the culture. I right? think. I think the strongest part of go, that 1666 part of the movie is that you go into the natural beats where you get introduced to good and mm-hmm. or his great, 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 whatever the fuck. And you're like, oh, and instantly we, as an audience, have already seen him and his whatever ancestor in, in 94. 94 and, and, and 78. 78. Yeah. And both times he's kind of the good guy, kind of, you know, like there to kind of help save the day in a certain, certain way. So. We follow the beats. Okay, yep. so in this time period, he's also the good guy, and he plays it up, you know, like, oh, that's fucked up. He's and, also a loner in this one. But he saves he's a day also... with the crazy motherfucker that kills all the kids and takes his eyes out. Yeah, so that's one of the things that once the evil, once the food rots, and then, like, all of a sudden, the pastor starts to, like, like I don't know. shit? He, well, he just, like, remember, he's in, like, a trance, and then the flies show up. Remember, no, we know about the flies. we know about those flies. flies. Yeah, so we're, the we're in the third up. one of the series. We know those flies. So Some soon shit's as the fly went around his head, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, the pastor locked all the kids into the church. And you're like, what the fuck? So Solomon, good, yeah, yeah. breaks in, and you see the pastor up there, and all the kids are still, and you're like, wait a minute. Did he take souvenirs? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, he took his eyeballs. Yeah. And then all the kids' eyeballs. Oh, that's kind of, no. That's Aww. fucking terrible. That's and fucking then, terrible. But then there's like 20 kids in there dead. Yep. That's probably the most hardcore thing they've done in the series. Oh, yeah. They killed, they murked 20 kids. And now, they murked all... some in the summer camp, but you know what you didn't see? You didn't all pile of them up. Dead. Yeah, you didn't pile them up. <laughs> you didn't pile them up. You go, all right, we got a pile of dead kids here. There yeah. we go. Yeah. You know, no, it was, that was fucked up. And then he like, basically, oh, and there's so much cool shit with like everything you've seen so far, how it unravels mm-hmm. after that, like. You know, the tunnel comes out directly under the pulpit of the church. Yep. Which equates to the where she breaks through, that equates to the grating in the kitchen of 1978 summer camp and the mall grating. Yep. The drain. It's like yep. everything comes together where there's it's everything I do appreciate that where they made sure everything has connections. You see But we get we get good fucking stab this motherfucker yeah, and you're yeah. like, Well of course. He's, he's a good guy. He's always good. a good guy, of course. Yeah. Like that's what sheriff he would do. Good. Take him out, motherfucker. Don't sheriff good. And so we're as an audience going, Yeah, he's doing what he does as a sheriff and does as a camp counselor no. to save the day. No. But then no. we find out that was his not sacrifice everything is fucking good. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> of course they you know, we all know by this point Sarah Fear was had her hand cut off and was wrongly executed for being a witch, you know. Uh, in front of her um, girlfriend, which is the reason why. That's what started the whole thing about them being a witch, because you don't want a dick. You're laying with a woman. Oh, you got to be a fucking witch. No, it's, de- it's, the, be, it's the devil. The devil. The devil. devil. The devil likes bootlegging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, as, as they start going on a hunt, they start, you know, telling lies about, Oh, I saw this. And you know they flat and out lied about that like, shit, dude. Like every time, everything happens in this time period. All it takes is one motherfucker's like, I believe, yeah, she was a witch. I saw some shit. That's how simple-minded shit. everybody every was, dude. No like, one questioned hey, anything. Hey, hey, I'm going to say some shit, too. I, I think uh, I saw her kill some animals with a brain and shit. Like, whatever bullshit, every motherfucker all of a sudden didn't say shit before comes yeah. out and, and droves like, oh, we got some shit to say because she's a witch and we want to make sure... We all agree she's a witch, right? Yeah, I mean, she's all a witch. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I we're saw not, some shit. We're all doing the right thing, right? Yeah, yeah we're gonna go try to kill. So they go out, and then they go out and they start try. They hunt them down. They catch the girl. I forget her fucking name. The one I think that it's Amy or someone. Amy. It's, we'll just say Amy. Amy, Amy whatever. Somehow she, practice. She played. This, this is the same actress that plays the girlfriend in '94. That got possessed at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So 
they, they catch her while Sarah, who, by the way, when she transports back in time, you see Sarah as our main character of 94 the whole time, which was a little weird. It's a little confusing, yeah. Because I'm, I'm sorry, but at, at this point, I, I think this calls for attention where it's a white father, a dark-ass fucking younger brother, and a mixed girl. It's really I weird. I thought at some point we'd get like a quantum leap where she'd walk by a mirror and we'd see we actual- towards the end. Towards the end, but I'm just saying, I thought like- Why is the brother- her brother from 94. Because everybody is. They just reuse the actors. I, I get it, but like, like, it's Puritan. They yeah. would not let a black person in sight, dude. By the way. They wouldn't, I'm, am I, I wrong? Wish, am I wrong? Yeah. Am I kind of wish, though, at the beginning uh, of 1666, that when she like looks at her hands and she realizes she's back in that time, she was she went, oh, geez. Like, <laughs> like just give us a quantum leap you know, yeah. moment just once, because <laughs> she transports right into <laughs> her body. Yeah, and just, yeah, yeah. Like, just give us, oh, geez. No, it just, it, like I said, it just, it just, it just seemed weird. It didn't bother me, but if we're fitting with the time period where everything else was so in that time, like everything about it, that they had that. Yeah. Not, not, and not that character. I get the quantum leap, but the brother, it's like, eh. Yeah, but I mean, everybody's in there. There was tons of young white kids from 78 that got murdered that could have been her younger brother. That's true. <laughs> and, and that's all I'm saying. You know, I mean, people sometimes people get upset about not having enough well, representation. But when it comes to maybe a time period. That's in her vision, her interpretation. She's using her it's brother. It's her brother, so okay. she uses her brother. You know? right, okay. And all right, all right, all right. the fucked up asshole motherfucker, she just heard the story you never about 78. Real father in 94 either. Nope. No, that, you know, the, you even know, in that period, he's, he fucking he hightailed it. A little it. bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, you know that actor was the teacher from Stranger Things. Yep, the science teacher. Right? Yeah, and the AV club leader or whatever. That was kind of cool. But anyway, so they finally catch. She finally um, goes to Solomon's house, and that's when she has to hide because they come to look at Solomon's house, even though he's already been riding with them the whole time, trying to find the witch. And then she finds his secret door and finds a little book with like this weird pentagram star thing and a name yeah and then he talks about how yeah fuck it i just want what everyone else wants and uh i found an easy way to do it kind of made a deal with the devil i guess one yeah. solely year yeah just one solely year and that was the pastor and then oh but the pastor killed 20 kids yeah uh, yeah that was unfortunate yeah <laughs> like, it kind of happens yeah. shit happens yeah but what we learn is is that that list those names mm -hmm. that we've been looking at everybody's like oh the fucking witch that's been the fucking witch did every it. name from the good family throughout yeah. all those centuries yep, that's all the good going Fuck, dude. and i'm gonna be good again this year yeah, and i'll be good this year, this year with this, this name year. yep and everything that we've been told about the witch from the prior two movies it's all bullshit it's all misdirection yep and, and that's pretty much where we get into back to well, 94, they, right? They, they, that's, and then you see the fight between the two. And the, you see the beginnings of the catacombs where right, when oh, you made the deal, yeah, the dude. big pulsating thing came out. Oh, that fucking that heart shit. thing? Yeah. That actually looked pretty. It looked good in that one. I don't know what they were doing in the other, in the other one. Yeah. They looked good in this that one. This one is like they went, okay, maybe we'll get maybe yeah. practical this bitch this time. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And then Wait, you see little, your hand get cut off, which that was pretty money. good. That was a little more money. Effects. A little more money this time in this one, I think. Yeah. The hand cut off was pretty good practical effects. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, she breaks out. And we already referenced that's part of the, it's been attached to everything else. That is a grating that she breaks out, you know, so on and so forth. She gets captured. She gets hung. But before she gets hung, she lays a curse. Well, on Solomon Good. Well, she's doing. She's trying to get her girlfriend and saying, "No, no, no, no. She can't do shit. It's yeah. all me. That's true. All yeah. me. I did it. I'm a fucked up person. Let her go. I'm. I'm the fucking worst. I'll fuck I'm your shit up. Shit. I curse your shit. Like yeah. she's doing what she can to help her out. Like I'll. No, I'll, she I'll she take the bullet. That, she meant that curse though. Yeah. On the goods. But I'm just. Yeah. But she also didn't believe she's a witch. So she's also kind of going like, "Hey, I'm. I'm gonna say this, but she's not actually a witch. She's just yeah. more." Get, getting her, her girlfriend, like, let her live. I'll, what, I'm already dead what anyway. they don't touch in on that, which could be a possibility, because the devil's already had a deal made and he's within that land, that yeah. her actually cursing might have... If she truly believes it and she made a pact right there, that yeah. could have been... The ending kind of negates that a little bit, like, but still. Yeah. It is a possibility, right? Because... It's how all good. People, how, how, how else are all the other victims coming back to life? Right? Like, I mean... That is true. I mean... You think but, Solomon wants his victims just chilling around, hanging around, like, hey, come back. Come on, help. Yeah. 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 Unless it was a way for him to stop having to kill the one per year. That's true. Yeah. That out. yeah. He worked that out. Yeah, like, they just do the dirty work for me. Yeah. It counts, right? Oh, They're dead. Right. Oh, and you saw where that weird red shit came from because the girlfriend in 1666 made a little halo for, like, band to go around her head. That's right. So remember around the summer camp and then all around the body, that red flower yeah. bloomed. And it was because of that. So that, that was cool. That was a cool how everything literally wrapped up. Yeah. In this fucking film. Yeah, we get back to 94, and 
they have to come out with some elaborate plan plan to you know fucking capture the the killers and then good yeah because she knows that good was the one who did everything god do you have access to a big building in which you could draw them in oh by the way, when they wrangle up their posse, <laughs> yeah, and they come across homeboy, um, that was the janitor. <laughs> oh playing yes, playing fucking Bone Thugs and Harmony. Yeah, another nod tonight because that was off of uh, East Nineteen Nineteen Eternal. Yep, Mo Murder. I was like, oh shit, I had that. I fucking had a CD. feeling. That was my first CD he's ever bought as a kid. That motherfucker. You, you, he was just kind of random in the first movie. But he had to. Come and you're back. like, there's got to be a reason because there's a whole interaction with him the and brother. Good, yeah, and then him and Good and like yeah, him, him and, and his good. brother and he's like, helping him out. Yeah, yeah. The, the spray cans and all that. So like, there's got to be something else going on. There. And so when they're like, hey. You want to fucking take out good? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what, you serious? Fuck no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he rolled up and he's just smoking and I hear fucking Mo Murder, Mo Murder. Yeah. I'm like, that took me back to being like 13, dude. <laughs> like, fuck, it was, I didn't expect, uh, everything up to that point had been rock. I didn't expect to I hear like say any hip hop from the 90s. Every one of the movies, the music um, tie in. Oh, yeah, especially six, yeah, 1666. That was, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, But even 1978, I mean, that had some really rad classic rock stuff and you know we, we went into that on the last one but bowie bunch of shit was in that yeah it just the the music cues are really strong and even where like we're saying in 78 where it brought back the nirvana version of mm -hmm. that and then it goes to the bowie one and that intertwined so yeah that's one thing they i don't know i think it's all the same director right i think it's the same writers and directors across okay. all of them yeah so. I, I believe so i didn't look into that but i think well i think i did when it first came out because i was curious and i'm pretty sure it's they did them all I think they had everything written um at once so yeah then um basically their their idea was because you know they got our main character's blood back like that's the blood they're after yeah the main character's blood so they decide to trap um they're gonna use them all how are you gonna spread the blood though oh they're gonna they're gonna dilute it and then with paint and then they're gonna fill it with super soakers. They're gonna fill up oh, super soakers, man. which is so '90s, dude. Yeah, so fucking '90s. So then, as oh, and they're gonna lock them in specific stores. That's what I love the, the use so of good. the mall, where it's just like, yeah. all right, and gotcha, trap ya. So they you put a trail of blood into multiple stores. The killers come. Not all of them though. We're still missing two. Yeah, little kid and Ruby Lane. But the other four, they come in. They get in the store, close the gate. They're locked in, right? And then there's two killers left. Solomon Good shows up. Well, no, first, uh, remember, two other cops got killed. Security guards in the mall got killed first before they locked him up. Yep. Remember? Um, but then Solomon shows up, and the uh, old the Z the Ziggy, grown-up Ziggy, ends up having to go out there and, I don't know, douse him like Carrie. Because that yeah. was a reference to 1978. Right? Yep. And then he's covered in her blood. And why the fuck she isn't sprinting? The fact you could catch her, yeah, she's just like, like, she's like, take that, jog. And, eh. and oh shit, you caught up with me with you being in better shape than I would expect. Come on, man, <laughs> run, yeah, fucking. But now run. he's like, let's just wear all this uh, all over you. And, and then they lift the gate, and of course the killers, the thing, okay, they, they already lifted the gate at that point. Yep, like she had plenty of time to run. Yeah, run. Yeah. That was annoying. That was a little annoying. Yeah, she kind of fucked up the plan. Yeah, because if not, you're like, all right, he's and dead. devour the shit out of this motherfucker. He's fucking dead. Yeah. Anyway, she grab he grabs Ziggy and then of course covers her in the blood and then now the killers are after her too. But then they have the wise idea with they still have blood and they soak each killer. Oh, and then the killers start killing this, each killer. All right, this all right. So let's just throw this out. Of the entire series, this was the most badass part was you have built all these fucking killers up. Now go after each other. And that's and it's your Freddy versus Jason moment. And that, like, literally, like, I'm going to fucking, you know, use my axe. I'm going to fucking stab you. Like, you're just trying to kill. But they're just going to reanimate. That big dude was just throwing people around. Yeah. But Whatever it gave you say, time. They all turn into mush, kind yeah. of. And then the mush gets back together. Well, it gave him time. Yeah. That's, that's what they were trying but to do. But I, I just found that so entertaining of just like, all right, let you take you out this way, this way. And they're just fight each other. And, like, they're all going to just kill the shit out of each other. Cause yeah. The and, I mean, after, while that's going on, Carsama runs off. I mean, okay, so after that, it's just like things ensue where they're chasing good down into the into the the tunnel system, yeah, system. And oh, what's her very, uh, what's her very face? The girlfriend who's possessed breaks free finally while yep. in the mall. So she goes down and she attacks our main character. And then when he she, when a uh, main girl gets away from that, um, they're at, they're at the heart now, the pulsating glob. Which shit. again, I'll say, it looked. Better. It looked so much better than the prior movie. I mean, and of course, Solomon had been there waiting. Yep. 
So he starts fighting her and stabs her, yada, yada. And then shit happens. And then she slams her head, the, the, her, the girlfriend's head, who's possessed really hard, knocks her out. And then I guess the, the, the it was a cool montage of seeing all the, they go, they flash back and you see all the people that were killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swoop. That kind was cool. of like, yeah, like you, you're, you personally, your family is fucking responsible all for this. all these fucking deaths. And then. Uh, last person being Sarah and stabs Nick Good in the fucking eye, and yeah. that was right. that, yeah. that was a good. That looked practical. Yeah, drop. He drops dead, and then all the killers poof. die. And I mean, flies. literally, lots of flies. But poof, as lots in literally every one of them, like pops into fucking flies. Like they like just... lots and lots of flies. Yeah, yeah. Them all's gonna have some fly, fly problems for oh, a while. God. <laughs> I'm just saying. You just added about what I don't know, like a, a thousand. Yeah. No, I was more. Uh, dude, it was, a, yeah. It was there's a, lot a fuck of fucking time. Flies. But right now, them all might need to shut down. Get some exterminators in there because there's a oh, shitload it was of flies. Fine. It was gonna be running fine. Yeah. So, right. and then of course the girlfriend gets up. She's not possessed anymore. The bulging thing goes back into the ground. You know the the deal is done. All the names go away and yada yada yada. And all the, all, everything goes back to what it was before the the pact was made in 1666. But when they leave, they go through the trap door, which was but that she knows about the main character because she was Sarah Fear. Yeah, it's the same trap door to the house of Sol- of you know Solomon Good, but now Nick Good, and he realizes he's living in a fucking mansion in Sunnyvale. Yeah, like a, I mean, it's a fucking mansion, dude. Yeah, so it's good to be good. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. It's Good to be good. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, sorry. It's good um, to be king. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, they go outside, and then they look across the street at the neighbor. This is Sunnyvale now, and Sunnyvale has always been blessed. What a bunch the, of and the they're first like first fucking scene with Sunnyvale. The dude backs out of his yard. He gets hit by a dump truck. Yep. Because he, he's already being a dickhead and just giving him like the fuck you, you Stay fucking guy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, fucking. And then bam. And you're like, yeah. oh yeah, oh, that was so satisfying. And then we see just how Shady Side starts to get nice, and Sunnyvale starts going to shit. Yep. The brother, Nick Good's brother, denies all plausibility. Uh, like, I, don't know I didn't know he was into evil shit. Whatever. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah you did. Yeah, you did. You piece of shit. Fucking mansions oh, and little shit. Little brother, fucking finally meets the cute girl that is he's been fucking talking to on Messenger all the yeah. time. And you know when he, she was like, oh yeah, if you want to if you want to chat online, here's my handle. I'm like. He's like, I've already been chatting with you. Yeah. yeah. You're here. Yeah. You're a person. Yeah. Replacement for my druggy cheerleader girl I wanted to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, when they flashed and showed her dead by, the, the, that was sweet, the way they showed her mm, fucking Oh, dead. yeah. Oh, man. That was cool the as chunks, shit. The chunks. The oh, chunks that were dude. left. Oh. So, yeah. Everything worked out good. Dad said he had a fucking uh, job interview. He'll be home for dinner. Don't cook because he's going to make it. So, the family life's getting better. Everything's good for our main character. It's like the end of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street in a way, where it's just like, I'm not going to drink anymore. Yeah, but Things not as are, dramatic, because, I, uh, because literally someone takes the book. Yeah. So that's a little different. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, oh, things are. I, I don't want to drink alcohol. I don't want to do this. Everything's just, the sun's out now. Like, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I will say, um, I forgot to mention at the final battle, when Nick stabbed her, you thought, that's, that's a gut stab. She's fucked. But no, she taped a bunch of books from the bookstore, which were... R.L. Stein and Christopher Pike books. Yep. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. I See, love how they incorporate. And maybe we should explain to some of our audience who, who might not be familiar. Back in the day, there used to be bookstores in a mall. Yes. That was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not just books a million and Barnes. Wait, Nobles. wait, wait. Do we also need to explain what a mall is? I didn't even think about that part of it. Yeah. So. Most of those are going away. Yeah. There's like only two around here now. Yeah. Seriously. No, there's three Regency, Chesterfield Town Center, and Shore Pump Town Center. Yeah. Kind there's, of. There's That's kind of a mall. I don't know. Yeah. Chesterfield's still a mall. Yeah. It's closed. It's. But that yeah. that that would be the model mall for this because yeah you know, yeah I mean Regency probably have like four stores open. God, it looks like fucking terrible. Anyway, you would be able to trap those killers though. You'd have plenty family. of empty stores to trap them in, right? Your family though, yeah, that's good. But no, it's like um you you didn't just have Barnes and Nobles and Books a Million. You yeah, know. fuck ton of other ones. What was the other one? Wasn't there another one that used to be B. Open? Dalton. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, one. I remember that shit. Yeah, the, yeah, and there was there were small ones in in malls. Yeah, just rolling. Yeah, dude. It was like fucking Radio Shacks and Suncoast. Remember Suncoast videos? <laughs> Fuck, Fuck yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> it's like FYE replaced Suncoast, but now FYE's gone. Yeah. Because no one buys physical it's, media it's anymore. It's a fucking mall it's a, it's store, a, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so that pretty much wraps up. I thought it uh, it passed the chopping block. I personally, it's my, I didn't want to spoil it. I, I think it is. my favorite I, one. Yeah, and I at that point when we were we recorded, I hadn't seen this. I kind of have to agree with you. This one, I think the transition of not staying entirely in 1666, but going, okay, and now you had explanations. Well, they had to wrap it up. And I also think the setup of the first two with, again, um, good, 
And then this is all the, the reveal. other things, the underneath, the the yeah, the red stuff. They make a big deal in seventy eight. Like all that shit, like culminates and wraps up. It's it was the perfect like slowly and again, giving you just setting up the killers to have to attack each other. That was so good. That was so, so fucking, fucking entertaining. Good, that was that was. I would say uh, overall the series. There's not a weak one in this. No, I enjoyed and that, all. Of them. And that's that's the thing is that there's three movies. We picked this last one. I think is the strongest one. But in general. All three of them are, have good kills. They're fun to watch. Yeah, agreed. They're fun. I, I and this is my second time viewing them all. I enjoyed the second viewing as much as the first viewing. Um, you know, we pointed out some flaws in in the very first of ninety four, but it wasn't. A, it was a more of a nitpicking thing where it did drag for a little bit, but not enough to be a big deal. Like it was still. In, I still enjoyed watching it the second time. Yeah, you know, um, it was just the same part, still drug. So, I like said, all in all, all of them passed chalk and block. We let you know the first two did. Now we we'll let you know this one did. It was great. So. I recommend if you haven't watched them, get in it, get on it. Um, I do it. Did, I did. I thought I read a couple articles saying that there there is more in store. I think they're working on a few more. I know yeah. there's a Christopher Pike series coming out in October this year for the Midnight Club, which was his series of books. Yeah. So I'm really stoked. I about think that. it honestly the this one that we just reviewed is kind of what pushed it because it was so well received. Yeah. That this all right. Let's do, do some, some more. more. I mean, do he's it. got so many Fear Street books. Yeah. Like there's a whole vampire one that could go into. Bam. I mean, the werewolf one. There's all this shit. Anyway. So uh, hit us up at lowdownbrown.gmail.com. Let us know what you think. Did you watch them already, or did you go back and finally watch them because you listen to our episodes on them? Uh, either way, let us know. We want your f- feedback if you enjoyed these episodes and our uh, reviews of these films. And um, as always, go to gwipodcast.com. Ch- click the Amazon link on our, under our links tab, and it takes you to Amazon. You log in and shop like normal. That's all you got to do. You just go through our link, and you can buy tons of Fear Street books. Yeah, tons can, of Fear Street books. Throw a few shekels our way in the yeah. process. Um, tons of Christopher Pike books. Yes. You can buy a bunch of 90s music on Amazon Music. <laughs> yeah. That we mentioned. You can get the Nirvana Unplugged and then. Yeah, you can get the Bone Thugs East 1919. Oh, shit. I mean, come yep. on, dude. I mean, yep. all this shit through Amazon. You know, just hook us up. That's what I'm saying. Help us out. Um, right next to Amazon on our, on our links page is T Public. That's where all the merch is for every show under the GUI network. Uh, there's tons. Uh, every. Uh, every fucking podcast has designs you can get it on tons of stuff you can get them on everything from notebook covers to travel mugs shirts hoodies onesies for your kid because you know so much shit so much Just shit do a collection of stickers and there's, and there's sales like every fucking weekend for like 35 yeah. percent off so you never will f- pay full price just make sure go through the link on our uh gypodcast.com and and then sign up for text alerts and it'll alert you when there's a sale and um why on GUIPodcast.com? Make sure to check out all the other shows on the network. There's something for everybody. All great content. And until we talk to you again, embrace the madness. and remakes, two men will stop at nothing to make it even worse. Join Mike the Hobbit and Tondi as they play by their own rules while pitching new takes on some of your favorite and least favorite films and TV shows. What podcast would dare to bring this upon the world? This is Smack My Pitch Up. Mike the Hobbit here, Lowdown Brown, inviting you to check out Geek Some of the Influence, a podcast that pairs booze with conversation with good friends. And a little nerd culture. We get a lot of colorful conversation out of our episodes, but it is here for everyone, no gatekeeping. Always level up everything we do. We'll punch up, never punch down. Exactly. So check out Geeks Under the Influence everywhere you get your podcasts and join us or die. Shut the fuck up, Hobbit. Welcome to GUI Nights. GUI Nights. 
Yeah, I am Lowdown Brown. With me as always, Mike the Hobbit. This is the tangential side of GUI. This is like so many of those other shows that has the after the show bit mixed with a little bit of Baywatch night, so it's a little sexier. It's a little bit after hours. Also while tying it into the previous episode of GUI, so look forward to that too because this comes out the week after the flagship hour-long episode. So make sure to check out GUI nights, and uh, when you're done, you can go the fuck home. Hey guys, Scotty P here with Smash on your left, and we are the Geek Fathers. That's right, bringing all the trials and tribulations of being a geeky parent. So welcome to our world. And as always, join us or cry. Coming straight from the mouths of madness, I'm Lowdown. I'm F.U. Hunter. Do you love horror? We fucking do. So this is a podcast dedicated to all things in cinematic horror. We're talking movies, television, composers, special effects artists. We're going to fucking cover it. So if you love horror, embrace the madness. My name is Amy Bogard. And I'm Mike the Hobbit. And we are the hosts of Deeply Upsetting, where we use our expertise to answer your most upsetting hypothetical quandaries, such as what non wigan animal deserves wings? And what body part deserves a secret mouth? Which cryptid is the worst roommate? These questions and more that plague you will be answered on Deeply Upsetting, available anywhere you get your podcasts and at GUIPodcast.com. In a world of blockbuster movies, there is another dimension. The dimension of schlock cinema. Join us at Beautiful Disasters on a journey into the fringe territory of B-movie abandon. We review the flicks that are forgotten or underappreciated to give them a proper place in the annals of celluloid history. I'm the Groots. F.U. Hunter. Your guides at Beautiful Disasters. Come along with us for a fun ride. May May the the schlock be with you. you.